It's an absolute stunning winter's day. I haven't even lit the fire this morning. It's just so nice and warm. The sun is out. There's not a breath of wind. Just finishing off from the part two video, putting a few dwangs in. Currently sitting on six degrees, which is just magic. I managed to get, um, I think, about two weeks off work. Hopefully the weather stays like this and I can just crack into it. I've put an extra double stud that's dead centre directly underneath where the ridge beam will go. So all of that weight is coming down with the double stud on top of a pile. I don't think the roof will have a lot of weight in it, but you've got to allow for wind because the wind on a roof can put an incredible amount of weight pushing down. That is going to be a fantastic height for an open ceiling. I've got that top end secure with a clamp. Well, through some miracle, I've managed to cut this at the right angle. Your bird mouth's cut needs to allow for whatever's on the outside. So I've got a scrap piece of cladding here. Bird mouth cut, that's a good fit. This one will be my pattern for this whole side here. So make sure you put a P on it for pattern and mark and cut every other rafter off this. Slowly but surely. I've got my rafters at 600 centre. Uh, because I'll have to run plywood lengthways to line the inside. This is my least favorite part. There's something about rafters that just irritates the hell out of me. I think it's just that constant up and down the ladder. I'll be glad when this is over. I'm just nailing these in at the moment and I'm going to have to go around each one and put a steel strap from the rafter to the frame. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, there's the sun in the way. There we go. I don't mind doing this because it's quite quick. That'll hold those down, the wind will never lift that off. Put these rafter ties in. It's not really necessary for a building of this size. These walls are not going to bow outward. I just think they're cool. I like open timber. I'm cutting the tails 150 mil out from the from the frame. All I've done is I've just got a 90 degree line with a level. I just line the square up on that 90 degree line there. Mark which degree that is which is that pencil mark there. So that is 27 degrees. All I have to do is put a square on that line that's 150 mil out, get the 27 degree mark on the tail and mark a line down, which will be 90 degrees all the way down. I'm just putting the purlins on the roof now and I know what some people might be thinking why are you using 4x2 for your roof purlins? I buy it by the pack load directly from the sawmill so I can get it for a really good price. If I was to go and buy a 3x2 from say Mitre 10 it would cost me more than what I paid for this 4x2 so it just makes sense to use what I've got and use the cheapest material I have. Just got to put this third purlin right in the centre. 1600. So I'll put this purlin 800 centre and that'll be for my iron, naturally. And we've just had a full week of solid rain, like proper heavy rain. It's a pretty good example of why I am putting the floor in last. If that plywood floor had been down, it would have started to delaminate with that much rain on it, absolutely for sure. I'm going to do gable ends off the front and back, and I've worked them out to a very specific measurement, which I'll explain soon. I'm going to have to put some wire netting around these. These are evergreen elder trees, and a deer came down, came down that track there, and stripped this one completely bare, and one next to it as well. But it's got all this new growth coming back. 4 metres, 500 divided by 762. 
5.9 sheets, so six sheets each side. So usually a gable end is one foot out from the face of the wall. Uh, one foot's about 300 millimeters. So one sheet of iron uh, gives a cover of 762 mil. So I'm gonna have my gable ends 285 mil out from the face. 285 each end is 570. So basically four meters 570 divided by 762 mil cover of the iron is pretty much bang on six sheets either side. I might as well work it out so that the iron I'm going to put on is exactly edge to edge. That's the way I see it anyway. Thank God for clamps. So that's the outside of my gable end. That's why I've left these tails hanging out like that because they're adding strength and supporting the um, gable end. This is not an easy place to be working and trying to hold the camera at the same time. I can assure you of that. Normally you'd make your gable end as a ladder, all one piece, and then attach it up there. But as I'm working by myself, and that would be quite heavy, I'm not risking dropping it or dropping myself. That's the gable ends finished on both ends and that's why it's called a ladder because you have those dwangs in between and it kind of looks like a wee ladder. Well, I think I can call that finished and I can start putting the cladding on. I'll do the walls first then I'll put the iron on the roof then it's floor, door, window, insulation, lining then it'll be about done. <laughs> 